Welcome to Segment Next. I'm your host, Jonathan Crow, and today marks the first episode of our Hardware First series. So we're going to spend a little time today looking at the new GTX 1080 and 1070 to see how they compare. Both cards have boasted some impressive numbers so far as both are Pascal cards, so expect to see some serious performance improvement in terms of virtual reality. So what new features should we be expecting from the 1000 series? Well, we don't expect there will be any major differences between the two cards in terms of features available to them. Although the 1080 may be set up better for VR by comparison to the 1070 as its specifications truly help it dominate in VR performance tests. However, both cards, as you might expect, will have the same streaming, game recording and lighting customization options that are available through the Shadowplay software from NVIDIA. But that's not exactly a new feature from NVIDIA, so it's really to be expected. However, a new feature from the 1000 series is NVIDIA Ansel, which is a neat little tool that allows you to take screenshots in-game, but unlike traditional methods, the software allows for users more freedom with camera angles to capture the moment just the way they want. It even gives you some fun filters like its Instagram. Eventually, we're likely to see this tool in the 700 series and the 900 series cards as well. Another feature for both cards is their support for the new SLI HB bridge, which NVIDIA claims doubles the available bandwidth compared to older generations of SLI connections. Finally, they both have NVIDIA's FastSync, which is a much improved version of VSync, which locks the graphics card's output to the refresh rate of your monitor. Standard VSync lets the card continue to run at full power but limits the final output to the same as that of the monitor refresh rate, which means that micro stuttering can occur and in rarer occasions there can still be tearing due to the card producing more frames than the monitor can show. Moreover, VSync has quite a high millisecond overhead due to the way it operates, which is a severe performance loss for gamers who are playing competitively. Because of how fast Sync actually operates, it manages to eliminate tearing while still maintaining a low latency performance that gamers want and proves to have a very comparable performance to turning VSync off entirely. So there isn't much of a difference between these cards in terms of their features, so we're going to have to look at how their specs compare to get a better understanding of these two beasts. The 1080 has 2560 CUDA cores, 1607 MHz core clock, 1733 MHz uh, boost clock, 8 GB of GDDR5X VRAM, totaling out at 9 teraflop speed with a memory clock of 10 gigabits per second and a bus width of 256 bits. The total amount of power used by the actual card is only 180 watt and it has 7.2 bead transistors. Also, because it's a new process, it's using the TSMC 60 nanometer process. The 1070 only has 1920 CUDA cores, a slightly lower core clock rate at 1506 MHz, and a slightly lower boost clock rate at 1683 MHz. Again, it has 8GB of VRAM, but this time only GDDR5, totaling at, at 6.5 teraflop speed, with an 8 gigabit per second memory clock, and again the same 256 bit memory bus. The card only uses 150 watts, but still has the 7.2B transistors and the same TSMC 60 nanometer process. So there is some interesting difference here as you can see. First we can see that the number of CUDA cores according to the specifications on the 1070 will be around 75% the number of CUDA cores on the 1080. In addition to that, there is a higher clock speed at both the core and boost levels, which when combined with the higher memory clock speed and the number of CUDA cores means that the 1080 should deliver roughly 25% more speed, with it being able to deliver 9 teraflops over the 1070's 6.5. Still, not bad performance from the 1070 here as it easily rivals the 980 Ti. You will also notice that the 1080 uses GDDR5X memory instead of the standard GDDR5. This offers new and improved ways of data transfer on the GPU architecture. Essentially, GDDR5X allows for double the theoretical bandwidth speed of transitional GDDR5, which also explains the higher clock speed on the memory. So there are some very clear differences here between the 1080 and 1070, with the 1080 coming out on top in terms of specs. So let's take a look at the actual performance of the card. Now we're going to use PC Gamer's own review because it compares both cards and a few other previous cards. Um, makes it a little easier for us to actually have a look at what's going on with the cards. Now, the new Pascal based cards are exceeding the performance of both the 980 Ti and the Titan X in every game at every resolution they've tested, which is incredibly impressive considering that the 1070 is priced at $379 compared to the 980 Ti's $449 and the Titan X is $999. 
So let's take a look at the chart here. So what PC Gamer have done is they've taken the average of 15 games and the frames per second that you'd expect to see from them from their benchmarks. Uh, so this gives us a very all-round view of what the cards will perform like. So as you can see at the very top of the chart we have the 1080 with an average at 1080p of 132 frames per second. Going up to 2K, you end up with 94 frames per second, and on 4K, you're actually likely to see 54 frames per second, which is absolutely phenomenal performance. Then looking at the 1070, you can see that even at 1080, it's still really fantastic, being second on the chart with 112 frames per second on average per minute. Um, at 2K it's 76 frames per second and at 4K it's 44 frames per second. As you can see the two Pascal cards are completely thrashing the water with the Titan X and the 980 Ti listed just below them with a good solid 10 frames per second lower than the 1070. Which actually makes the 1070 a bit of a bargain deal. So let's talk about pricing. There are two different cards available, the Founders Edition and the Regular Edition. The GTX 1080 Founders Edition is currently priced at £619 or $699, with the 1070 Founders Edition at £399 or $449. By comparison to the regular editions of these cards, the 1080 is at £529 or $599, and the 1070 is at £379 or $379. So there we have it, the 1080 outperforms the 1070 in every class as we expected, but we really can only recommend this to gamers that are looking for the best in VR performance, or are a 2K or 4K gamer, or maybe just someone who wants to boast having the fastest card on the market. The 1070 has a price that really makes it stand out with performance that will be more than enough for most gamers running 1080 screens. So that is our breakdown of the 1080 versus the 1070. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any tips or hints for us in the future when making this kind of video, please let us know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, just click the button to see more awesome videos from us. You can also check us out at segmentnext.com. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Segment Next.